Hello and welcome. I'm so happy to see you today and that you're here with me. Um, my name is Lisa and this is my channel, Cross by Floss, where I chat about my love of cross-stitching as well as life blabbings and a little this and that thrown in. And today I have a kind of a two for video. So it is a stitch with me video as well as a review on the Ben Q um, Genie E reading desk lamp. And um, so I hope you stay tuned for the end where I do uh, a little review, but I'm also going to actually talk about it a little bit during my video as well. Not really a v review on it, but just kind of like my experience with it, which I guess I guess is a review, but it's not showing you like what it is. So um, I hope you, you stay with me to the end for that. Okay. Today's Stitch With Me video. I'm so excited about this pattern, you guys. I've wanted to do it for a really long time. And, um, and I, I don't know why I haven't. I, I don't know why it's not one that I haven't pulled out because it's a small one. And so I think that, you know, it has the potential of getting finished. Okay, not anytime soon. Though. I'm not going to lie. Anyways, the pattern, you're probably like, what is it? It's Eliza and Dunning's 1850, and it's by Samplers Not Forgotten. So that's what it looks like. And there's her name. And Samplers Not Forgotten. And um, I don't remember where I purchased this from. I don't remember. But the great thing is, is it only takes three colors. And um, so I was like, you know, I'm all over that. I love patterns that don't have a lot of color to them because, or a lot of flosses to them because then it's not so expensive to kit up, first of all. And then second of all, um, you know, chances of having those flosses in my stash are pretty great. Not on this one. <laughs> so you guys, I have for the first time in my life my whole entire stitchy life, I've done a conversion. I know, I know. Um, I'm as shocked as you. <laughs> but as you can see behind me, that box, that box right there, that is filled with Victorian motto, Victorian motto flosses, um, be stitch me silks, uh, Mrs. Seda's, um, color and cotton, weeks, gentle arts, all those kinds of things. Mm -hmm. Filled, just filled. And, um, and I always get paralyzed because I never know what to do. So the three colors that this, um, chart said that it needed, and they're in gentle arts, um, sampler threads, was brandy, walnut and heirloom gold. So I didn't have brandy or walnut, so I pulled up the DMC conversion for that. And then I did have heirloom gold, so I, I pulled that out. Well, when I started comparing them and then comparing the picture, I was like, those aren't the colors, or not, not all of them weren't the colors. This in here seems very gray blue to me. There's a lot of like um, up in, yeah, blue gray in here. Now, maybe if I would had the, no, because brandy is gold, is kind of a yellowy gold color. Walnut is a darker kind of brownish-ish color. And then heirloom gold is also a gold-ish color. And so I'm like, well, where's the blue gray? Like I, I, I'm confused. I'm so confused. So my DMC conversion wasn't going to work because it was all like gray. Um, I'm sorry. It was all more, um, gold brownish yellowy colors. And I was like, mm, that's no, 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 no. So I went and I found four colors because um, I was looking at the pattern and I'm like, there's some areas in here that it seems like it's more, it's got like a darker and that's not, I don't know that it's represented in the, in the colors. Now, how long ago was this pattern? Maybe that makes a difference too in the colors that I have. 
There's no date to this pattern. No, there's no date. So I don't know if it's like a newer pattern or if it's been around for a while. I don't know. I don't know. Anyway, um, it's a beautiful little sampler. And so I was like, yes, I would like to do this. So I did do a little floss toss and a little conversion. And I chose for the Stitch Me. Let's see here. For Be Stitch Me colors and we're gonna see if they work out and if they do then I'll let you know what colors they are but um, in place of the heirloom gold I chose this one I'm introducing a bluish gray color that has some beautiful variegation in there and then in place of I don't remember which other color this was walnut um, I chose this one because it has a ton of different variegation in it and for the letters I think that this is going to be beautiful and then I also pulled out this one here because maybe that needs to be with the darker so you guys I know it's shocking I am actually going to do a, a conversion and and make changes <laughs> I don't I don't know who I am so um I have chosen my fabric. I've gotten everything all ready. So I hope you join me for this stitch with me, whether you are bobbinating or stitching yourself or, um, you know, just whatever kind of craft you're doing um, and that we just get to sit and visit for a while. So grab, I've got a cup of coffee because it's morning. Um, so I am going to enjoy a cup of coffee on this wonderful Easter Sunday. So a happy Easter as well. Um, and we're just gonna, I'm just gonna do some lapping of, of things. So um, let me turn you guys all around and let's get to it. Okay, so I'm gonna get going on the Stitch With Me part. Um, so like I said, I am doing, what pattern was this again? Um, Eliza Dunning's 1850, um, by Samplers Not Forgotten. Um, I am doing it on a 20 count Ada in, um, the color is called Vanilla Vate and it's by Be Stitch Me, which means that I am using all Be Stitch Me products today, which is kind of awesome. Be Stitch Me Silk and um, Be Stitch Me Fabrics. So I'm in her Fabric of the Month Club. Bar none, you guys, I love her fabric. I just love her fabric. And I get Ada because that's what I stitch on. Um, I am now in the 20 count um, Ada Club. And I have to tell you, I love working on um, the 20 count fabric. Absolutely love it. And um, so I will be doing that a lot for samplers in the future. Really like it. Um, and then I used to be in her Silk of the Month Club. And her silks are beautiful, you guys. Just absolutely beautiful. But this is the first time that I'm actually using them. Like, I've felt them. I've played with them. I've put them together with colors and all that. But I've never actually, like, put them on a piece of fabric. And um, and so I'm super excited to, to be working with them. Um, and I see already, um, just from the few stitches that I've put in, I probably will join her Fabric of the Month Club again in the future. Um, I stopped because I just have so much floss and I was never using it. So, um, but now that I did a conversion, you guys, I'm still really excited about it. <laughs> okay, um, this is a different setup today too. Um, I am using my Lowry stand. I don't know that I've ever used my Lowry stand in a Stitch With Me video. And I am using, I am not going to recommend these in any way, shape or form. In fact, after this video is over, I'm going to rethink my life and see, you know, how I, I can make these better. But these are, um, uh, I, I don't want to call it a Q-snap because it's not a Q-snap, but a, um, uh, a holder for your fabric 
from the, this is the uh, Michaels brand. You guys, it is so flimsy. Like, look at that. It is so flimsy. And um, I am, I'm hoping that either this is a uh, anomaly. I have a couple more, so I'm going to try them. But uh, who, not loving, not loving. And um, this is also a 17 by 11, which is a lot bigger than I typically work on. And um, so it's, this is, this is going to be a bit different. Um, I also am, you're going to see some shadow on here. And I think that that's because I am using the Ben Q Genie e-reading desk lamp. And it's actually behind me and it's putting the light on my fabric so I can see. Um, I'm, stitch I'm stitching close to my uh, window, which has a great daylight, but it is not enough still for me to see the holes because I have bad eyes. I have bad, bad old eyes. Um, and so I have that and I have to tell you guys, I love this light. Can I just tell you how much I love this light? I have traveled with this light around my house from my computer to my stitching spot to my bed where I stitch most of the time when I'm home um, because when I get home it's late and, and all of those things. So um, I have already put some stitches in. I am doing one over one and I've had a couple of questions about what that means or I've seen some people ask that in the community as well, um, especially for new stitchers. So if you're a new stitcher, um, uh, you know, don't take my word as gospel. I believe that this is what, what the case is. And if I'm incorrect, somebody can definitely correct me. I'm, I have no problem with that. Constructive criticism is a good thing. Um, so one over one or one over two or two over one, two over two. Basically the first number is the floss, like how many strands of floss you're using. And then the second number is the fabric and the square of fabric that you're going over. So um, one over one means that you're using one strand of floss over one square of fabric, which is what I'm doing. I'm using one stand, strand of floss, <laughs> words, one strand of floss over one square of fabric. Now, if you're using two over one, that means you're using two strands of floss or you're taking one strand of floss and you're doubling it so you can do the loop method. And then that indicates that you're using two strands of floss over one square of linen or fabric. Um, one over two means you're using one strand of floss over two squares of fabric and two over two is two strands of floss over two squares of fabric. So hopefully that helps. Um, I was also confused when people were like, what is one? I, you know, I'd, I'd heard some floss tubers back when I started floss tube and they would say, oh, I'm doing two over one. And I'm like, what the heck does two over one mean? I now understand. Um, also the strand of floss is your preference on what kind of coverage you want, right? So um, I'm using one over one because I'm using a silk and um, and I did a bit of a test here and I do like the coverage so far with the color. And, um, and so I'm happy. I think that two over one would be too bulky on a 20 count, but it depends on what kind of floss you're using, right? So, um, you know, I know that some people only like using one strand of like DMC or Anchor um, and using one strand on like 18 count. I personally like two strands because I like that little bit of bulk to to that, especially depending on what what the fabric looks like underneath. Um, I don't I don't particularly want to see my fabric. Personal preference. Um, so yeah. So anyways, I am doing one over one. And um, I'm doing full cross too. Some people will say doing one over one, but um, uh, it might be tent stitch. Uh, or they might say doing two over one tent stitch, which means that they're not fully fully forming the cross. They're just doing the one 
one leg, it's called a leg, of the floss and two fabric. So if you're doing a full cross, I guess I don't know what that actually means in the community. To me, when I say one over one, I'm doing a full cross, one over one. I'm doing one full cross over one, one fabric square, or two over one, two strands of fabric, full cross over one strand, one block of floss, uh, fabric, sorry. Um, but if you're, if you're using like a full coverage, some people will do a uh, tent stitch and do two over one tent stitch, um, gives really nice coverage. Um, and only half the, half the cross. So it goes a little faster too. Now, um, yeah, so it's, it's just personal preference and I recommend doing test stitches all the time. You know, um, sulky thread is a little bit thicker than like, uh, a silk would be, right? Um, uh, but it's a little less than a DMC. So, um, again, it's personal preference, you know, to, for me, a anchor is, seems to be a little bit more plumper of a, of a thread. And so, um, I might do anchor, uh, one over one on an 18 count, but on a 16 count, I'm definitely doing two. 16 and below, I am 100% doing two strands of floss. 18 count depends on what I'm using. 20 count so far, I like the one, one strand. And then the bonus with the one strand is, is you don't have to worry about, you know, whether your stitches lay nice because they always lay nice. <laughs> All right, so I've already started because um, I'm using one strand. Normally, I do a loop start, so I know in the back of my fabric it's it's secure and everything. But with um, one strand, you have to have a tail in the back unless you're doing a pin stitch. I don't know how to do that. So um, I anchor my floss in the back with the stitches um, in the back. So I've already done that, so you don't have to watch me move this back and forth. Plus, it was a little painful because, again this um, knock off Q snap. <laughs> I'm not impressed, you guys. I'm so not impressed. Plus it's a lot bigger. It's a, it's a 17 by 11, which is not something I typically work on. Um, I think my biggest has been a 10 by 13. And uh, so this is a little bigger than I'm used to. So it's gonna be a little fun to, um, to work on so uh okay so let's let's get her started um and I already know I've already counted out what the what this what the stitches are for this so I don't even have to count you guys how great is this <laughs> until I get to the end we'll see how long I talk <laughs> All right, I hope you all had a really wonderful week. Um, this past week, the little has been in um, spring break. And so she goes back to school on Monday. But uh, I do look after her um, when her parents are working. And so I had, you guys, it was such a nice week. I did have to work. Um, but my work is very, very flexible most of the time. And so it's really nice to be able to be at home with her. Now she is 10. She's going to be 11 next month. And, um, and so, you know, she still needs, needs, you know, guidance. And I mean, I guess kids always need, okay. I still need guidance. I, I call my mommy for guidance <laughs> still to this day. Um, or I talk to my daughter or, you know, friends, whatever. Uh, oopsie, what happened here? There we go. Um, so, but, but basically, I mean, she can't be left alone by herself all day long. Right. And, uh, we have never put her in daycare. And, um, so she has not had kind of that experience and, um, 
so somebody, you know, somebody is always around watching her. So, uh, you know, and because it is spring break and she is 10, we don't want her on the computer all day long doing absolutely nothing. And, um, and so I was like, okay, well, we're, we're going to go to the library and, you know, there's a Van Gogh exhibit here that apparently was really good. My son took his girlfriend too, and, um, they really liked it. And because the little loves art, I mean, she's more into anime art, um, than anything, but, um, still, you know, art's art. Okay. That's, that's wrong. Art, no art. I mean, all forms of art, I think should be experienced. So to me, when I say art is art, that's what I mean. Um, all, all forms of art should be experienced. Um, but unfortunately I was not able to get tickets and, um, and take her to that, um, because of my, my work schedule plus, um, uh, when her parents were coming home and that kind of thing. Um, because traffic is not, not always fantastic in, in Washington. Um, so, but I, I'm, I'm hoping that maybe, uh, over the weekend, I might be able to take her next weekend or maybe for her birthday. Um, I think she'll enjoy it. But anyways, you know, I was thinking, okay, well, what other things can we do versus her just sitting and watching, uh, YouTube all day long? Because I'm not going to lie, the YouTube she watches, I just can't even, can't even. I mean, some of it's funny, but I, oof, the screaming and yelling that happens in the things and she watches. <laughs> She watches a couple of YouTubers who, um, well, they get on my last ever loving nerve. Let's just put it that way. So, and she is just absolutely giggling over. So, um, she loves art. And, uh, so I bought her some new sketchbooks and, um, and I, uh, I have purchased some very good, well, good for a 10 year old, um, not Crayola markers, but a little bit of more of a step up. So she has had really good, uh, drawing pencils. Um, not, not the best ones, but a good middle of the road, uh, type of, uh, drawing pencils. And she's very good about, you know, keeping them, keeping them good and all of that. So I, I bought her some new sketchbooks so that she could do some of her drawings. And uh, she gets on, on um, Zoom with her little friends and they, they watch <laughs> YouTube videos together and draw and, and uh, play Minecraft and that kind of thing. But then I was like, okay, well, what else can I do with her? And she has always expressed an interest in stitching and crocheting and um you know anything that I'm doing she's like Grammy will you teach me I'm going to admit I am not the best teacher in the whole entire world I don't have I have very limited patience and um and I I'm not good when there's frustration involved or um or just the repetitiveness of, of something for a long period of time. Um, thankfully, she, I mean, now that she's a little older and she's got a much more dexterity and um, stamina, she is a lot better. So I purchased some diamond painting little um, keychains off of Amazon. And she was, her and I sat down for an afternoon and cranked out a couple of the keychains that she is going to give to her little friends um, when she sees them at school the next week. And uh, she was just so thrilled, you know, um, she picked them up and she knew exactly which friend was going to get what. And uh, I was allowed, allowed you guys, to, um, to do a couple for some friends and she did one for herself and one for her best friend. And, um, 
and it was just so fun. You know, we just sat there and we talked and there was no computers involved and it was just such a nice way to, to spend a day. Just, I mean, it was just so nice. And, um, you know, she didn't get frustrated. She didn't spill the stuff all over the place. Um, you know, we had a little bit of a rough go at first that she was putting the wrong, wrong color on wrong places or they were upside down or whatever. And she couldn't figure out, you know, how to, how to make it right. And, um, but we worked it out. It was all good. And it was just such a wonderful way to, to spend the time. Then the other thing was she apparently at her school, they, um, have an art class and the art teacher is amazing and they do all types of art. You know, they, they work with clay and they work with, um, bricks and they work with, um, pencils and markers and paints. And then they do, uh, then they work with fabrics and like just all kinds of stuff. And so then they were doing a embroidery project in the class and it's apparently for an auction for fundraising for the school. And, um, she liked the embroidery so much that she asked me, you guys, my little, my little heart just grew like 10, 10 sizes as the Grinch would say. <laughs> when she said, Granny, will you get me um, some embroidery things so we can do that together. I about, I mean, you guys, I could not find stuff fast enough. Like <laughs> <laughs> I was so thrilled. And, um, so, uh, I kind of, I had to ask her, you know, exactly what she meant by embroidery because I haven't seen the project and I'm like, okay, well, does she think that cross stitch is embroidery or are they doing punch needle or like, what are they doing? Right. And, um, so I found out and it was embroidery. So I went online and I found a couple of kits and I purchased them and, um, and she's so funny because I think she thinks what I do cross stitching is embroidery. And, um, so she's like, well, yeah, can you just go to your stash and, like bring me a hoop and some stuff. <laughs> like, well, honey, Grammy doesn't actually have that. Just, I mean, I can definitely get you hoops and thread and all kinds of stuff, but I don't have the, the embroidery fabric, nor do I have patterns that are specific embroidery. And uh, so anyways, I found some, some kits, um, uh, children appropriate kits on Amazon and bought them. And her and I spent two days. Oh my gosh, it was so much fun. I cross-stitched on the couch while she was over there doing her embroidery. And I had to help her, you know, thread her needle. And, um, but then the next day I brought her uh, one of those uh, threaders that I had purchased a long time ago. Um, that I think I showed in some video at some point. And, uh... Oh my goodness, she got the hang of that real quick. And she was just, oh man. Now, she embroiders a little differently than, than um, I had been taught. And also how she'd been taught. So she watched how her little friends were doing it. She watched how the teacher did it. And she went her own way. <laughs> and you know what you guys it looks fantastic it looks fantastic the first stitch is not but all of her other stitches really are and um and I was amazed so now I've got to figure out how to help her do that first stitch um so that it looks the same I think what it is is that she does the first stitch the way you're supposed to I think do embroidery I don't embroider so I'm not entirely sure but she um, does the, the stitch. So let me see if I can explain it. She does the stitch. But then the second stitch that she does, she goes, you know, past, past the point to go back. So she's, she um, comes up in one area and goes down in one area. And then she 
goes up in one area to come back down towards where the the first thread is but she goes into that thread so she's making like kind of a loop all the time and it looks really cool but her first stitch is not like that and I think she's not completing like she's not doing that first one the second one the same as she is doing all the other ones does that make sense I don't know anyways I you guys I'm so impressed like this kid if she keeps it up I've told her I'll I will definitely teach her how to cross stitch because <laughs> and and I have some kits already that I had had you know belong to a couple of clubs and they came and they were very kid like and I was like hmm not quite what I was expecting and so um you know I never really did anything with them and uh now now I have the opportunity to hopefully she'll pick them up and and want to do them but it was just oh it was just so fun and and the best part was you know we just we got to just sit like little girlfriends and talk. <laughs> and, you know, heard all about like the things that she wants in the future and how she feels about school and her friends and how she feels about, you know, people online. And oh, my goodness. And I was just, oh, it was just so much fun. And, um, you know, I think back to when I had my kids and I had four children or I have four children and, um, you know, as a parent, you get so busy, you get so busy with, and I was, I was very fortunate. I was able to be a stay at home mom, but you know, when they, they were home, every one of them needed something and, um, or we were, you know, going somewhere. And so life seemed to be always so busy and that, you know, there was very few times that I felt like I got to sit down and smell the roses, so to speak. And um, this past week, I got to sit down and smell the roses. And it was just, it was just so fun. And I feel bad because I feel like I've missed that kind of with my kids. And, um, you know, with the busyness of life and stress of being a parent, and yes, it is definitely different as a grandparent. It is so different. Um, but I, yeah, I feel, you know, and, and that's not to say, like, we always had, I always had snuggle and reading time with my kids until they reached a certain age. And, um, you know, we... I made up a, a tooth brushing song, teeth brush, teeth brushing song, um, for, you know, our nighttime rituals and that kind of thing. But it was always the helping with homework and the, you know, projects for the next day and cooking and cleaning and, you know, the busyness of life. And, um, yeah, it, it I don't know that I ever like had real conversations with my children, um, you know, advice. Yes, but not to the, I probably did have them, but I didn't pay attention to my kids because it was always yep, yep, yep. And then you, you know, you sort of hear things as a parent and then you like clue in when something really important happens. But most of the time it's just like chatter. That's what I think I mean. I mean, um, I didn't, I, I don't have that with the child knows how to chit chat. She comes by it honestly, just like her Grammy, which is funny because if you, uh, if I don't know you very well, there's no chitty chat. <laughs> it's only when I get to know you well that I have a lot to say. <laughs> so clearly I know you all real well. <laughs> now it's easy behind a camera, easier behind a camera. It was just so fun um, to stop and smell the roses and just enjoy being in the moment and not having to worry about rushing off to this next thing or, 
you know, how come, uh, you know, dinner wasn't started or, you know, piles of laundry to fold and just all of those things, right? It was just so nice. So I really appreciated the time that I got to spend with her, even though, yes, I did work. Um, and there were a couple of times that she even said, Granny, are you, are you ready? Are you coming? Um, because I got involved in, in a, a little client fire. Um, but, you know, for the most part, oh man, we had such a good time, such a good time. And then, uh, speaking also of crafts, so my son, my youngest son, um, girlfriend is interested in doing crafts as well. So she, you know, told my son who then told me, and, uh, I was like, oh, that girl just needs to come and talk to me. I am 100% happy to share whatever limited knowledge I have, um, about crafts and, you know, what, what might be fun to start. And so we decided cross, uh, crocheting. I know how to crochet fairly well. Um, and I enjoy crocheting. I enjoy putting needle and yarn together, uh, or hook and yarn together. I don't know how to knit. Knitting and I are beyond each other. Um, I have taken classes. I've had friends show me. I love the click clack of the needles, which is one of the reasons why I wanted to learn. But my brain and my hands can't, they can't seem to um, coexist together for knitting. Odin. Yes, you can hear my little partner with me. He's he's decided that this is grooming hour for some reason, though, like seriously, 20 minutes ago, he was fast asleep and snoring. <laughs> so I apologize. Um, yeah, so I, I told her very frankly, I don't know how to knit but I do know how to crochet and I've done, you know, several things over the years. Um, and I just, I enjoy the, the, um, yarn going through my hand. I enjoy seeing something come to fruition quite quickly. It is just so enjoyable, just so enjoyable. Um, and so I gave her a ball of yarn and, um, and a hook uh, that I like using. I, I have very specific hooks that I like to use um, because they just feel better, especially, um, you know, when you're crocheting for quite some time. Um, there's just some hooks that feel better over time than others. And uh, so I just shared with her, you know, what I felt and, and what I liked. And um, we sat and, um, I taught her how to start and then, you know, just do a simple chain stitch, just a simple chain stitch. And uh, I told her, you know, you just practice this until you figure out your tension, you know, and you, you know, make as many as you want and then rip them out and then start all over again until you figure out, you know, uh, how the yarn can go through your fingers properly and um, what feels natural to you and um and all of that and so and then i also told her about um a youtuber that i came across oh many years ago and his name is mikey and he is the crochet crowd um his channel name is the crochet crowd and he does things with um joann's and yarn inspirations and uh caron um uh, yarn. Um, and it's just, I mean, he teaches you very, very basic and, um, goes through the steps. I really have enjoyed his channel and I love him and his partner, Dan. Um, they're just so sweet. And of course they're Canadian. So, um, and they've moved to where my parents grew up in Ontario. They've moved to a city in Ontario and uh, they're just they're just so su super sweet. But Mikey is a great teacher, and so I said to her, you know, 
watch, uh, you know, I'll teach you, but uh, watch him as well because he will give you great basics. You can stop, you can rewind. And then I said to her, do you know how to like speed up a video or make it slower? You guys, this is how I know I'm old. Like the younger generation, I mean, it's just like, you know, so basic for them, right? And I was like, oh yeah, you know how to like, you know, slow down a video so you can see something better or, you know, see it in slower motion. And <laughs> the look she gave me, oh, I was hilarious. I, I kind of died laughing. I like this girl a lot. <laughs> She's got a great sense of humor. Plus, she likes the same things I do. She's very into crime documentaries and, you know, seeing what make people's brains, you know, work and, and uh, what makes you tick as a person and why serial killers are the way they are and you know yeah she's just and she um uh, she's adorable i like her a lot so um she asked about cross stitching and i said absolutely i would love to teach you how to cross stitch and you know she's also interested in diamond painting and all the things and i'm like oh girl you just need to come down to my lair and um we we have a good time together so right now, um, you know, she's not, she's still seems to be a little wary of me and, um, and, uh, but she is, according to my son, cross it or, uh, crocheting with the same, same ball of yarn that I've given her. And, uh, she's watched the, the crochet crowd, um, Mikey to learn other things. And she is, uh, gone on and, and learned how to do a couple of rows. So, um, I'm super proud of her. And in fact, after this video, I'm going to go talk to her and see where she's at and if she brought it and maybe we can, we can do some, um, crocheting together. Yeah. It's, it's so funny because none of my kids expressed an interest, even like my oldest son, who's very artistic. I thought that cross stitching or crocheting would be a really good outlet for him. And, uh, you know, he's, he likes stamping when I went stamping and he likes the scrapbooking and, you know, the art of all of that. Um, but he never really, um, expressed an interest, nor did I pursue it. I mean, it's not, you know, he may have very lightly in passing. And again, the busyness of life, sometimes you don't always listen to everything your children tell you. And, um... And he wasn't one to, to, you know, pursue something if he, if he said his brother and his brothers and sister don't have that problem, but uh, he did not. So, and unfortunately he was the first and, um, his brothers and sister kind of, uh, overshadowed him a little, which looking back on it now, you know, when you have time to reflect on things, you're like, Ooh, how did I not see that? But you know, you can just go forwards, right? You can just go forwards. So, uh, you know, maybe there's hope. Maybe one day he'll be like, oh, that's really cool. How did you do that? And I'll be like, oh, let me tell you. Let, let's do it together. <laughs> and I'm so fortunate. You know, Mr. G um, supports all of my crafting endeavors. And he seems to like like the end product. Well, he would love to see the end product more. <laughs> um, and he's, he's baffled over how I, you know, flip from thing to thing. And, and he is like, what are all of these bags for? And I'm like, oh, my project bags. And he's like, yeah, what's in those? And I'm like, projects. And he's like, are they finished projects? And I'm like, <laughs> no. And he's like, so why are you starting another one if you have all of these other, you know, all of these other ones? And I'm like, because why are we questioning it? What, what, what is happening? Why are we questioning it? And uh, he, he giggles about it. He thinks it's hilarious. He shakes his head. He's very much a, a person that, you know, has a project, finish the project. He, you know, from A to Z, we're, we're going to get it done before we move on to another project. And he got me, who is so not that way. And, um, and, 
thankfully I'm he goes with the flow he is he may not always uh love it and it I think it it especially when he's on the road and he is like I still need to fix that hole in the ceiling and I need to you know put the utility sink in and it needs a faucet and whatever and I'm like yeah so the utility sinks in I'll get a faucet later and you know yeah the hole in the the ceiling I have to clean up around that first before you you know and put put tarp down before you you know fix that and and uh oh the shower head in the bathroom oh yeah no I'll get another shower head whenever and he is like okay well let's go get one now and I'm like hey <laughs> I can procrastinate like nobody's business and that man I'm sure he goes on the truck and he is like oh my goodness okay when I get home I'm gonna get A, A B, C, and D done and I'm like mm. yeah and poor guy but he goes with the flow and he's just he's pretty awesome about it um what else happened oh I did have my birthday was last week and um and so that was really nice. I got flowers from my work, which was lovely. And, um, and you know, my kids, I, I don't, I might make a big deal about my birthday, you know, when I say it and everything, but I'm not one for like a big party or, you know, I don't need like a ton of gifts or anything like that. I'm not, I'm not, um, that's not totally my way. And, uh, but the kids all went together and uh, my youngest son went to my favorite LNS, which you guys know is Threadneedle Street. And, um, oh my goodness, my eyes are going blurry. Um, Threadneedle Street. <laughs> Let's see here. And uh, picked up another gift certificate and uh, Denise, who is the owner of Threadneedle Street, recognized him. And uh, and then, of course, when he said my name, she was like, oh, yeah, your mom. And um, she was just in here not too long ago. And uh, so um, give her these beads. I There was a bead pack of Mill Hill beads that she didn't have um, in stock. And so she ordered. And so she just added those to the gift certificate with my son and said, you know, tell your mom happy birthday. And it was just, oh, I mean, how sweet, right? Just so sweet. And, um, and then I've been working on my April diamond or April blue diamonds, April's blue diamond from Miradelia. And that's my focus piece of the month. But unfortunately, so, <laughs> I also had gotten into an accident at the end of March, so really the last day of March, and um, I actually got hurt, and so I wasn't feeling good, and um, I just kind of came home after watching the little, and I was exhausted, and I came home to, you know, have a nap, and, and then always went to bed early, so there were actually a couple of days um, that I did not... I mean, I just didn't work on, on her at all. And, um, and then, uh, a week after the accident, a little more than a week after the accident, I actually went to the chiropractor because I was just, um, in just such, yeah, just a lot of, uh, back pain and stuff. And, um, so then when, you know, they adjust you, well, that might feel good. You're also super tired after that, or maybe that's just me. Um, but yeah, so there were just a few, a few days that, um, and then of course I had a root canal. <laughs> it's been quite an April so far. And, uh, so then not feeling good with that. And then of course the little has got a cold and, um, and, and we did check. We, we tested her for COVID because it happened just after she got out of school and, um, but no, she's just got a cold. And um, then of course, uh, mom got it and Brandy got it. And of course, Grammy got it. So while I'm not as sick as they are, I am definitely starting to feel the sore throat and um, congestion. And uh, 
Yep, it's just that time of year. And it was really cute because she kept saying, oh, Grammy, I have allergies. I'm sure that it's allergies because one of her little friends has allergies. And I said, oh, baby girl, mm, that's not allergies. <laughs> Grammy has allergies too. That's not allergies, sweetie. That's a full on spring cold. Yeah. And she's like, well, that sucks. <laughs> she's pretty funny. And, uh, and, uh, so yeah, I'm sure that after all of the, the time that we spent together, and of course, you know, I am very touchy-feely with my family, um, in a good way, um, you know, there's always, you know, always hugging and, um, always, you know, little kisses and, uh, I hold her hand in public and, um, yeah, just all of those things. We're very, uh, we're, we're a very, uh, touchy-feely family, <laughs> I guess. And, and which is funny because when I grew up, I never saw my mom and dad, like, hold hands in public or kiss before my dad went away. I'm sure they did. We just never saw it, my brother and I. And, um, not until I got older and, uh, you know, the same with my grandparents. I don't ever remember my grandparents, like, even a peck on the cheek, you know, um, or just standing in the living room and hugging. Like, I don't recall those things. They may have happened, but I just don't recall them. Um, and I know that, you know, my dad always held the door open for my mom, always, you know, took her elbow and guided her and stuff, or on the small of her back, you know, just kind of held her and stuff. But, um, they weren't like super touchy feely when I was growing up and, uh, and we are not that way. We are definitely not that way. We, um, yeah. And I think, um, my daughter's, uh, fiance grew up also in a family that is not super demonstrative. And so when he got into our family, I think he was like, Ooh, you people aren't normal. <laughs> Um, but, uh, he, he's, he's getting with it. He's getting with it. He might, you know, he may not hug me yet or anything, but he is definitely, um, I think he's heading there. I think he's heading there. Um, he's a good guy, but yes, we, we are, it's not unusual for, you know, me to walk past a child and, and touch their arm or, um, them do the same thing, you know, and even when I talk with my daughter's, or when I talk with my son's girlfriend, um, you know, when, I, when we're talking, I touch her arm and, um, I think at first she was like, what, what just happened? But you know, when you get excited about a conversation, you go, oh my gosh. And then did you, did you know that, you know, and she was like, what's happening? She got, she got with it real fast. Um, but yeah, we're, we're, uh, a little more touchy feely. So because of that, you know, the spreading of germs from the little, um, I'm sure is, is happening. But of course they got it way worse. They've been, they've been down. And, uh, so I don't know. I know the Easter bunny came. Um, and so hopefully that helped brighten, brighten some spirits over at their house. <laughs> oh, all right. Well, I am almost to the end here with my floss and also the counting, which is fantastic. I've been wanting to do this, this uh, chart or pattern for quite some time. Like as soon as I got it, I was like, oh, this is so cute. And how come, you know, I have not... I have not um, worked on it before now, especially when there's like a lot of, uh, you know, there's not a lot of um, individual motifs in here. Mm, yeah, no, there's not, there's not a lot of um, like little motifs in here that, um, you know, it's just a few stitches and then you, you know, in one color and then um, quite a ways, there's a lot of space and then you have to, it's like, there's quite a bit, you know, it's not, not, you know, this, this heart is probably as most of a 
there's just a little bit of something and then nothing, you know, but there's a lot of like border and, and lines and, you know, the alphabet and, um, these motifs are a little larger. There's more to them than just, just a couple of stitches in one color. So, um, and I like that because it's hard for me, especially if, um, I think I need to learn how to do a pin stitch. I I really need to learn how to do that. Um, and that might make life a little easier, especially on one over one. Um, where was I going with that? Oh, because, um, you know, my current way, if it's just a few stitches, it's hard for me to start and end the, the um, floss and make sure that um, I have enough underneath and then I am, when I finish, um, when I finish off my color and I'm, I'm done the stitches, I do a lot of weaving back and forth um, with my floss because uh, I'm a little paranoid about, um, Amy talked about this in her, her floss tube too, uh, and I, I was like, oh yeah girl, I feel you. Um, I'm paranoid about it coming apart and I know it's not going to, and it's funny because I watch some other floss tubers, um, who, you know, when they're doing stitch with me is, and they turn their fabric or they turn their, their work over and they run their stitches through and they only do it through like a couple and then they only do it one time and then they, they, um, snip it off. And I'm like, how come you're not going back through or like going through more? more floss or coming back through and anchoring more like I go in back and then sometimes back again the other way and then sometimes I'll go like on a diagonal and try and catch more floss so sometimes if you look at my back um it's a little raised where the ending is okay I'm I'm fine with that I'm I'm making sure that my floss is not coming apart <laughs> I am, I'm paranoid of, of that, which is funny because I have never um, washed a piece of my own stitching and um, to know if, you know, that, that it would, it would fall apart. I don't, I don't know why, but um, it's just something whoops, that I've always done, always done and uh, drove my aunt crazy when she was teaching me how to cross stitch and um yeah it's just something I've always done and uh so when I saw Amy or heard Amy say the same thing I was like mm -hmm, I got you girl I understand that so much I do the same thing and I I don't understand how other plus tubers are not afraid I'm sure that it's fine I'm sure it's fine um because if it wasn't, then everybody would, you know, do what I do, which is uh, over anchor, over, over, um, over end, maybe is what it is. Um, but I'm, I'm okay with it. And typically I have enough floss sometimes when I'm playing thread chicken. <laughs> it's a little harder, but that's what thread tuckers are for. And uh, believe you me, I do have those. So, yeah. All right, you guys. Well, um, I hope you enjoyed. I'm going to end here because um, I would like to go see what uh, maybe the others in the house are doing and uh, whether or not I can convince my son's girlfriend that maybe she would like to do craft hour with me. Because <laughs> why do laundry or anything? No, no, that seems silly. Um, I mean, I can do laundry and craft too. Um, but yeah, and I, I also, uh, at the end, I'm going to tack on a, the review of the, um, Ben Q Genie e-reading desk lamp. So I hope you stay tuned for that. Um, I will say I have used it for several days in, I think I mentioned this already. I'm not sure what I said at the beginning. I lose my train of thought a lot, you guys. Um, and then I'm like, did I already say that? And my children go, yes, yes, you did. Um, whatever, it's fine. Um, 
but I do want to say that I very much um, like like the uh, light and um, you know I've used it through this full entire video and I have been able to see each and every uh, stitch properly what I have done and uh, prior you know I've got reading glasses on and um, and a light as possibly close to that I can get it without it impeding me this is not it's not impeding me at all it is behind and it is throwing enough light perfect amount of light um, where my stitching is and I can see and I don't have my readers on today so um, that is huge progress for me so they, right there right there my readers cost a whole lot more than this lamp believe me so um yeah really like this and my readers are prescription readers just in case everybody was like well you can go to the dollar store yes you can but those readers are not i can't i can't use those for the astigmatism and the issue that i apparently have um i have prescription readers and um and i like them they're great they're great but i have not used them at all today or with this lamp and um with this fabric so that's fantastic all right well anyways i hope that you all have a really wonderful day and if you're watching this on easter e happy easter and uh if you're watching this after easter i hope you are all having just a really super day and um remember take care of yourselves and uh self-care it's important you guys especially in today's today's world self-care very important anyways okay you guys all have a great day i'm gonna go see what is up and get something to eat and then maybe do some more stitching on this and also on my april diamonds april's blue diamonds and uh yeah okay i hope to see you in my next video next weekend all right until then Okay guys, so this is the portion where I am going to do a review on the BenQ Genie e-reading desk lamp. Um, so I was approached by Evelyn to, uh, who asked if I would like to do a review on the BenQ Genie e-reading desk lamp. And um, after looking into it a little bit and seeing what it was and I, lighting not only do I like you know organization but lighting is so important especially when you know well I wear glasses and so my eyesight is not fantastic and um and stitching on lower count higher count fabrics um now I'm stitching on 20 count it is really important to me to be able to see that fabric really well and um over the years I have spent quite a bit on different types of lights that people have recommended or has been on sale at Joann's or whatever, right? So, um, and there has been very few that I've been super happy with. Um, they've been great in the beginning and then um, not so great as time has worn on. So when Evelyn reached out and asked if I would review this, I... Um, said, yeah, I would love to because I I would love to see another uh, lighting option, especially for stitching. So um, it came, it was nicely boxed, it was well wrapped, um, it was fantastic. And so when I um, took it, and it was easy to unpack, also really important. So um, it came in two different pieces. It came with the stand as one piece, the stand, and then it came with the top, the light portion, and the um, cord <laughs> um, as one additional unit. And um, so very, very easy. There's an instruction booklet. It tells you to take the top, put it into the, the um, stand, and then there were two little screws with a cover that you put over top. And then it told you how to go about pushing the cord into the groove of the stand. And I was like, that's fantastic. Because that's another thing I hate is having my cord like all over the place. Speaking of the cord, this cord is long. It's 
it's it's still going um, and it's plugged in way back over here so um, it's nice and long which I appreciated because sometimes in where my stitching spot is is not always um, there's not always a plug that is as close as you would like it to be and so there can be some acrobatics trying to get to a plug or um, or you know moving furniture to get to that light so I like that it has a very nice long uh, cord to it. Now, when I unpacked it, I, I kind of giggled because um, I didn't realize, but this looks very futuristic. Does this not look like a George Jetson? I just aged myself. Um, kind of, a kind of light. <laughs> so nice big base and heavy, heavy, heavy. And it has the little feet on the bottom. So it, you know, has some stability on your, on whatever surface you're putting it on. Um, and then, um, and it tilts, the light tilts either up or down to where you want it, which I thought was really cool. And then the other thing is, is that you can tilt it. This, this um, arm also tilts to how you want it. So you have so many options on how to have this light go exactly where you want it to be. Then there are, um, there, it came with a really uh, awesome and very easy to read manual. And um, it has two light, um, two light, what do you call it? <laughs> styles um so or types two light types one is the for reading and then one is for what they call screen work um now I have used both different different um varieties <laughs> words are hard um and and I like them both but I will say that I use the screen option more so what you do, and again, this is so futuristic, I love it. What you do is this silver, the silver um, uh, knob here, you just touch it and the light goes on. It is so cool. And then this knob here um, gives you, uh, you know, the brightness and the dimness that you would like for your um, light. And then if you hold it for a couple of seconds, this little light goes orange and that's how you know you're in reading mode. And so one light would be cool and one light would be warm. Yeah. And, um, and so then when you, you twist this, it, it, um, gives you again, the brightness and the dimness that you want. And then you just simply press it and it turns off. There's no like, you know, having to fumble and, and find a, a, you know, um, tab to knob to turn on and off your light. I, I loved it. So anyways, I have used this for the past week and I have to tell you, I love it. I love it. And you'll probably hear me talk about it just a little bit more in my stitch with me video too, because I've used it during the stitch with me video. But, um, I have to say, I really like this. Now it is pricey. It's a little pricey, but I'm going to tell you honestly, I have, again, like I said at the beginning, I have used a lot of different lights. I have purchased a lot of different lights um, for stitching purposes, and um, many I have either given away um, or just, or they've broken, um, they've not lasted, um, or they just are not what I was looking for. And, um, so for the amount of money that I have spent on lights previously has added up to well more than this light here. And, um, so far I am in love with this light. I use it on my night table, um, and I can get it to exactly where I want it without any issues at all. I don't have to move closer to the light. The light moves closer to me. Um, by the way of tilting it or whatever. Um, 
And I like this so much that I'm actually going to purchase one. And the reason being that I would like one in my stitching area that is more stable or more permanent that I can take from my stitching to my computer area. And then I'd like to have one that is just on my night table upstairs. Um, and then I can move it from there to my stitchy chair upstairs as well. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's a good weight. It's a good weight. I would not take this to a retreat. It is just too, it's too heavy, first of all. And, um, and I, you know, it's not like you can move it down and, and pack it or anything. It's not portable, um, and compactable, I guess. Um, the only other thing that I would say, um, besides the cost is I don't know how long the light lasts and, and I did not look into it. So if I do find that information, I'll put it in the description below, but, um, I don't know what the longe longevity of the light is. You know how some, some lights will say you have 50,000 hours of usage on this, on this light or whatever, 25,000 hours. Um, and so, um, I, I didn't see that, but I will look and, and double check. And if I do find that information, I'll put it in the description below. The other thing too is I don't believe that the light is replaceable, which means that at the end of its life, I'm not sure what you do with it. <laughs> um, so yeah, and it seems to have like a warranty and all kinds of things. So uh, if you are looking for a light that will give you several different ways of using it in the way that you can, you know, uh, tilt it, tilt it to how you want it, um, move your base uh, to where you want it. It's super sturdy, very good quality. Oh my gosh, this thing, it, it's beautiful. The cord is all wrapped. It's beautiful. So if you are looking for a, a light, um, I highly recommend this BenQ Genie e-reading desk lamp. Um, so okay. thank you so much for um, watching my review. And thank you so much to Evelyn for reaching out and asking if I would do a review on this product. And um, yeah, all right. Well, I hope you all have a really great day and um, I will talk to, with you soon.